mentioned about uh, using gadgets. True. So as you, know, this is the time. Uh, all our programs is online and uh, then uh, everybody is uh, using more gadgets now. Yes. So how to be careful when we handle you know gadgets? So kindly talk to talk to us few you know uh, guidelines uh, how we must be careful. Because there is a possibility we can sidetrack to something else. So this is the time everybody, students, faculty, uh, pastors, you know, people all over the world now more, uh, you know, uh, relying upon gadgets. So would you give some suggestions on that? Okay. Uh, there are some things that are uh, just bubbling in my heart. Thank you for asking that question, uh, uh, dear Pastor, uh, Principal Sir. Uh, you know, one thing. Uh, I follow is uh, as I already explained mentioned in my message uh, Paul being a bond slave of Jesus I want to be his bond slave I don't want to be a bond slave to my gadget so there are some practical things that I follow for example in my whatsapp I don't have notification uh, I don't I use whatsapp a lot I I have a lot of ministry volunteers I communicate with them uh, I keep in touch with our ministry partners through whatsapp uh, a lot of things happen over WhatsApp, but I look at my phone when I want to look at my phone. So there are, and people who call me know that because there are times when I don't pick up their call and then I, after a few minutes or after uh, two hours or three hours, I'll call them back. Uh, because the realize, the more I, what I realized is uh, the more we have notifications for any app on our phone, uh, then the more uh, distractions there are, there are. But rather we need to have set times for us to look at the phone but of course um, some of us may be in lines of work when we need to be always connected to our phone but even then uh, you need to have that time slot uh, there are times when i have come to a system where for the entire day i don't look at the phone uh, or sometimes half a day i don't look at the phone that is the only way we we can prove to ourselves that we are not addicted okay and we don't have to prove to anybody else but to ourselves to reassure ourselves that we are not addicted to our phone and then secondly another thing that about phone is as ministers of the gospel and uh, there have been scandals with regard to phone use as well and last, last uh, few months have been very heartbreaking to read some of what our leaders have been doing and, and how they've been caught and uh, what what has happened so in that connection i want to make some another uh, thumb rule is to have an open phone wherein uh, your phone is an open a phone is something somebody else can check your accountability partner can check so my phone is an open phone so my wife uh, knows the password uh, the she knows how to unlock the screen and scroll through the messages and uh, and uh, and vice versa there are times when I give permission for my children to also access my phone because I want to be a model because I don't want them to be grew, growing up with a phone which can't be seen by anybody, anyone else. So I want to model that myself as a dad. So that's the second thing. So have a system where your phone can be viewed by everyone. So that helps you in phone related temptations like sexting and you know, and you know, there are so many horrible things, uh, you know, I'm not, and this is a real story. Uh, I'm not talking about people living in Bangalore or Chennai or Hyderabad or Delhi or Kolkata or Mumbai. I'm talking about second tier cities. So I get messages from, I get counseling calls from young people living in smaller towns. They say, this girl sent me her nude picture. Now what do I do? So I tell them, is it true that this girl has sent you a nude picture? Delete that picture and block her on WhatsApp and inform a reliable male friend, uh, maybe a pastor or a senior uncle or auntie who knows the, who loves the Lord. Be accountable. If something like that happens, you know, delete that and inform somebody, keep somebody informed. And a simple, when people have not followed simple things like this, they have destroyed their ministry, they have destroyed their life, they have destroyed their marriage. So these are some things that come to my mind. But at the end of the day, I can't give you three, four steps to uh, overcome phone addiction. It is basically when we love the Lord more and more every passing minute, then 
our tendency will be to pick up the written word of god the bible the old fashioned bible and read and highlight and meditate when we get a free time rather than pick up our phone our tendency will be to you know spend close that time and and you know god has called you to be a missionary to one group you have to discover that one people for me it was the google generation for you it could be the the kannadigas for you it could be the uh, you know the people of uttar pradesh i don't know what your calling is for you it could be the tech tech savvy professionals i don't know what your calling is you know clo- instead of just reaching out for the phone and uh, lo- checking all the notifications there close your eyes and pray because that's why we have a council pray without ceasing otherwise be addicted to praying and that's the meaning pray without ceasing be addicted to pray instead of checking the phone always pray without ceasing seven times a day i praised you for your righteous law psalm 119 so read the bible always in, in other words so when when we use our free time to in a basically finance these multinational companies they already have many money lots of money so we don't have to increase the business <laughs> so they already have a lot of money so i think these are some things that are coming to my hind mind uh, when it comes to councils on rightly handling uh, our gadgets